If you want to see CAN traffic but you don't have a vehicle to test on, your vehicle is equipped with a security gateway, or it's just too cold to sit outside, you can virtualize a CAN network with a tool called ICSIM. This tool allows you to interact with a virtual dashboard to generate signals and make changes on a CAN bus. This tool is publicly available on GitHub, and in this video, we're going to be installing it and learning how to identify the signals used for the turn indicators and speedometer readings. First things first, you're going to want to make sure your Kali virtual machine is up and running and you're sitting in your home directory. If you're in your home directory, you should see a little tilde sign right here. And if you're not, you can get there by typing CD for change directory and then the tilde. Hit enter and you'll be there. Then we have to get the tool. And this tool's on GitHub, the link's in the description. And we're going to type git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash zombie Craig slash IC sim dot git. This will take a minute, but it'll clone the repository into your local directory. Once this finishes downloading, there's a few dependencies we need to install. The first will be can utils, which we installed in the first video. If you don't have that installed yet, you're going to type sudo apt dash git install can dash utils. Enter in your root password here. If you're following along, the root password is Kali. I already have it installed, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install libsdl2. So we're going to type sudo apt git install libsdl2-dev, then a space, because we're going to install multiple things, libsdl2-image-dev. It'll tell you what it's going to install, and then if you want to continue, you press Y and enter to move on. Now that that finished, I'm going to run the suggested commands because there were some issues with the install. So I'm going to run sudo apt get update with the flag dash dash fix missing. Now that the missing packages have been installed, we're going to go ahead and move on with the process. So we're going to make sure everything that we need is installed for both can and vcan. And to do that, we're going to type sudo mod probe can and sudo mod probe vcan. We're going to move on. Just like we set up the CAN interface in the last video, we have to set up the virtual CAN interface in this one. To do that, we'll type sudo ip link add dev vcan0 type vcan. And then we'll type sudo ip link set up vcan0. So we're good to go. You can see when we run the IPA command, the VCAN0 interface shows up right here. I'm going to use the LS command to list everything in my current directory. And here we can see ICSIM, the program that we installed from GitHub. So we're going to use CD to change directory. And then ICSIM, you can use tab to autocomplete and hit enter. And we can hit ls again to list the things that are in this directory. Now, the documentation will tell you to run a command that you don't actually see here. It'll, it'll say dot slash icsim. But all we have is the icsim.c. So we're going to use this make file to create the icsim from the icsim.c. To do that, all you have to type is make all. Now, Inevitably, there's going to be an issue somewhere along this process, and I ran into one. Right now, it's saying it's missing SDL2 and no such file. And the last command we just ran was to install the lib sdl2 dev and lib sdl2 image dev. So what I went ahead and did is I hit apt-get update to make sure every package that was installed in is updated. And now I'm doing a sudo apt-get upgrade to upgrade the installed packages and make sure everything's there. There are quite a lot of things here to install, so I'm going to hit yes and enter. 
and just gonna take a bit, wait, go grab a coffee and come back. Now that that's finished, we're gonna try to make the file again. So once again, make all same error. So clearly we still have the same problem, so I'm gonna try reinstalling the packages we installed earlier. This happens sometimes and it can be pretty frustrating. sudo apt get install lib sdl2-dev lib sdl2-image-dev All right, so more stuff to install. This is probably where the problem's coming from. Third time's the charm, right? Try it one more time. Make all. And it worked. So I guess when you're doing it, you should start with the app get upgrade, app get update. Continuing on, we'll hit LS to list all of the things in the current directory. And you'll see IC sim and controls just like it's defined in the documentation. So the next step, I'm gonna split my terminal into a few parts here. So I'm gonna right click, split the terminal vertically. Now I'll have a terminal on the left and the right. And on the left side, I'm gonna split it horizontally. So I have one on the top and the bottom. Now I'm gonna type clear to clear out the screen. Now I'm gonna change directory to ICSIM on both of these terminals. Now that I'm here, we're going to run ICSIM. Dot slash will run the program. ICSIM is the name of the file, and we have to specify the interface of VCAN0. So ICSIM is running, and you can see the instrument cluster here. On this side, we're gonna run controls. And this will pull up your controls that you can actually input. So now we see the speedometer kind of jumping up and down since we opened the controls. What we can do is select the control window and use our arrow key, hold up, and you can see the speedometer climbing. And the right arrow will turn on the blinker and the left arrow will turn on the other blinker. In the first video, we learned about can dump where you can dump traffic. So we're gonna do that here. We're gonna type can dump and then vcan zero since the interface we're using is vcan zero. And we see traffic, but it's pretty hard to make anything of this. And the ARB IDs are just scrolling right by. Luckily, there is a program that was installed with the can util suite called can sniffer. So if we use can sniffer vcan zero, we see it outputs nicely and all of the ARB IDs here aren't moving. So what we can do is we can look at this traffic, make a change like turning on the blinker, and then identify which of these bits is changing. But we have a problem. There's a lot that are changing right now and it's pretty hard to tell what's going on. And if we were to just switch one, we might miss something and not notice which bit is actually changing based on the effect that we made. So if you use C and hit enter, it'll toggle the color mode. And this is helpful, we can see what's changing. But again, there's so many things changing that adding one more red dot to this is probably still gonna be difficult, especially in a real car with more traffic going on. So what we can do is use the pound symbol with shift three and hit enter. And that'll do what's called suppressing highlighting. So anything that's currently highlighted will no longer be highlighted when the bit changes. So we can do that a few times. Just keep using the symbol and pressing enter until you see there are no more red icons. There may be a few that pop up with intermittent changes, but we're gonna go back to the controls window and we're gonna turn on the blinker. So first we're gonna do the left side. And right away we can see this bit right here is switching to a zero and a one when this blinker goes off and on. So we'll hit the right side. 
and now it goes to a two. So it looks like we've identified the arb ID of 188 goes to a one when the blinker goes left and it goes to a two when the blinker goes right. And when they're both on at the same time, like we see here, it goes to three. So next we're gonna see if we can find the speedometer value. So once again, select your controls and hold up. And immediately we see popping up right here under RBID 244. This byte is climbing just as the speedometer value is climbing. When you let go, it goes back down. So we've already identified the blinker and the speedometer. This could be a little more complicated in an actual car with more things changing intermittently. But using IC Sim, you can practice in a few different ways. So we're going to hit Control C to quit and Control C to quit IC Sim. And there's a few flags that are interesting for us. Uh, the first is going to be the dash R flag, which is going to generate more random traffic so you can keep practicing this with different R IDs. So to use flags, you're going to type dot slash IC Sim dash R for random. VCAN zero. And you see it gives us a seed here. So if we copy that seed, you highlight, copy selection, and then we use dot slash controls, VCAN zero. We have to add the flag dash S for seed. And then you paste the seed. We can use the shift asterisk to clear out all of our settings that we made with, when we were suppressing the highlighting. And we can start suppressing highlighting one more time. So again, I'm just using the pound symbol here and hitting enter. And it's getting rid of all of the existing red, red bytes that are switching. You go back to the controller and we flash the blinker one more time to the left side. And we can see it's a totally different byte with a totally different R by D. So you and a group can work all on the same seed and have the same value. And you can use random to generate different seeds that you can pull into the controller. Now, one more thing, if we go back to these terminals and quit what's running, if you clear it out and you just type I see Sam with no arguments. You'll see some other options and you can play around with these. Same thing applies for controllers or controls. You have more flags and here with dash L you can switch the difficulty value as well. So once again, we'll do I see Sam random on VCAN zero. It will generate a seed, copy that seed. And then over here with controls, We'll do dot slash controls dash s paste the seed and we'll do level two vcan zero so this will generate a little more traffic and have some more random noise once again we'll do shift eight for the asterisk and hit enter to clear out any of our saved highlights that we were suppressing and we'll start suppressing one more time. So again, select the controls window, activate the blinker. And it looks like right here under one B six, the last byte Again, switches to one when we go to the left blinker and two when we go to the right blinker. And when we accelerate, we can immediately tell the 6A4 right here, which looks like just random noise, this third byte is incrementing along with this speedometer. So I hope that was helpful for you identifying CAN messages on a noisy bus.
You can plug into your own vehicle and mess with settings, maybe interior lights, fan speed, you can use your own turn signals, maybe honk and annoy your neighbors, and just give some stuff a shot, see what you can find. Um, the more you can understand about what the vehicle's doing and how the packets are shared, the more you can do with it. So have fun playing with this, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something from the video. Block Harbor, building great solutions for automotive cybersecurity to keep mobility safe.